Hey everybody, good morning, happy Tuesday. Welcome to the next day of your week with Reaper Pro Tips, starring me and disembodied voice Justin, who is actually here today. Um, in, fact, in fact, he's going to echo because I forgot to put him in my ear where he belongs. Um, so get in my ear where you belong, Justin. Um, but uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Oh no, Vimanaqua. You've been missing us. That's terrible. Ah, work schedules. They're so pesky. Why can't work schedules work around us instead of us working around them? That's what I want to know. There, now Justin is in my ear and you should not hear a Justinian echo. That is the hope, anyway. I'm gonna say I'm, I'm going to uh, make a brief phone call. Okay, have fun. Good luck. Um, Alright, so yeah, it's morning. It's morning, it's morning, it's morning. And Iggy with the sub. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Ah, yeah. So... So here we are, and uh, it is definitely one of those sleepy days since Kiri woke me up like four times last night. <laughs> yep, Kiri Puppy is currently chewing her bone enthusiastically. Right, Kiri good? But she she actually had to, we were a little late on stream because she had an accident right before stream that I had to uh, clean up. So hopefully this means Kiri will sleep through the stream and everything will be awesome. Um, yeah. Oh, and you guys will be thrilled. I, uh, I decided to go... Uh, go over to Fiverr and see if I could get some little um, emojis made for my Twitch channel. And I did ask for two Kiri emoji emojis. So now our next task has to be to get enough subs to unlock the Kiri emojis. So hopefully this artist, she has, she has really cute work and hopefully uh, she'll do cute little Kiri faces for us. Also some painting big dragon faces. So that is my thing that I, uh, that I did yesterday accomplishing. I should stream today. I, I wasn't originally planning to stream Tuesday, but I may stream just for a little bit this afternoon. Um, but yeah, so here we are, and let's go to a fire giant. Let's do it. Let's go here. This assumes that if I'm, I'm like, awake. Um, I may, I desperately wanted another, uh, another thing of tea today, but I, I held off. Yes, hopefully we'll get puppy emojis. I said, I actually have had pretty good experiences with Fiverr. Um, Michael Collins, Reaper Collins, has, uh, was the one who originally recommended them to me. Um, they're the one who originally, I mean, people on Fiverr originally designed my painting Big Dragon because I realized, I realized long ago that I was terrible at logos because it's really, a, really is a special talent to be able to do a good logo. So I decided to outsource it and uh, I have not been disappointed. So yes, yeah, so I decided to go to Fiverr again and uh, look at, there are tons of people on there doing Twitch emojis for very, very inexpensively. Um, so I'm excited and I hope that it turns out well. And if it doesn't turn out well, I didn't spend very much, so it's all good. But I would have to take a lot of time to do them myself because um, I wanted little chibi ones and I don't know that style very well. So I decided I would do that. Yes, hopefully. Good morning, Daffodweer. Yes, yes. All right, let us see. Hello, Fire Giant. What are we doing with you? Oh, yes, we're making glowy things. Let's get glowy things going on. So we want really quick to get our sunrise orange mixed up. Hey, Stephen Phillip. Good to see ya. Good to see ya. It's one of those kind of and takes a while to wake up days. But other than that, it's a pretty good day. It's a beautiful day. It's my grocery shopping day. So I get to get out of the house and enjoy the beautiful day just a little bit. One, two, three, four. Aha, nope, wrong white. Need pure white, not bleached linen. Oh, lawn guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I hate that one. The, actually, the lawn guys were just so loud that David came in off the balcony. He, he usually takes his meetings in the morning out on the balcony balcony because it's really nice out. But uh, yes, the lawn guys were very loud this morning, so I feel that. I feel not being able to get a nap because of lawn guys. So um, it's worth mentioning that I don't use this straight up lantern. Uh, I actually, because if you look at like a candle flame or a flame in general, you see this, usually an orange that goes up very quickly. Um, so we're using an orange yellow here, but I, it's seldom a, I never see like a bright yellow in a, in a flame. So I add like two drops of yellow 
per or, or two drops of white for four, per four drops or so of yellow. And uh, often I will also mix in a little bit of my sunrise orange into that yellow as well. So let's get some water and uh, Friday was his day at Trader Joe's. Twistedoma. He does, yeah, we alternate. He does Trader Joe's on Fridays and I do Sprouts on uh, Tuesday. Because there's just some things that are better, you know. Trader Joe's is great for prepackaged stuff and some other stuff, but they're not very good um, for some of the things we get. So, like if I'm looking for um, seafood, Sprouts has very uh, economical pre-frozen wild caught stuff. And I eat a lot of seafood these days because I'm trying to introduce more into my diet. So yeah, and produce at Sprouts in general is better. So, so yeah, we alternate. That way, uh, that way, it isn't just one of us doing doing the the dangerous get out of the house uh, sort of uh, errands. So I feel pretty good. Our our neighborhood Sprouts is uh, yeah. Yeah, I actually love Whole Paycheck, i.e. Whole Foods, Jedi Jared, but um, uh, it's ridiculous to go out uh, to the grocery store, in my opinion, when you can just order off of Amazon. <laughs> so if I need anything from Whole Foods or if we're running short on something and we really don't want to run out, um, the Whole Foods is just, just down the street from us. So doing the Amazon um, Whole Foods order where they deliver it to your doorstep is ridiculously gratifying. <laughs> And if you go over like $35, delivery is free. So it's like, and it's super easy to go over $35 at Whole Foods. Uh, so yeah, so there have been more than one time. Um, I would say every every third week or so, we'll be like, ah, we ran out of salad too early because we, you know, we never know what we're going to use. And, you know, for dinner, we usually only decide like a day in advance. And so, yes, I definitely take uh, advantage of the, the doorstep Whole Foods uh, thing. Yeah, I know. That's the problem, right, Autumn Mama? I used to be very far from the nearest Whole Foods in Denton, although I was near the Sprouts. Actually, the Sprouts was near Reaper, so that's why it was convenient. But um, once COVID kicked in, it was uh, it was no longer very convenient. So uh, I need my black and brown. Black and brown, where are you? There you are. Yeah, I, I like have looked at some of those services. Uh, I do like getting out of the house once a week and I like keeping my car, like, you know, drive my car once a week. So, cause it is an older car and it definitely, uh, benefits from exercise. <laughs> um, all cars do in general. You don't want to let them just sit for weeks. So I guess take that one day to get out of the house. But if we forget something, I'm, uh, I do Amazon a lot. And I do the Whole Foods free delivery a lot. It's gratifying. It's nice to be able to get salad or other fresh stuff. Hello, Mathbo. Yeah, I like Sprouts Produce, too. This Sprouts here is is definitely the kind of the lesser uh, grocery store. It's like a pretty old Sprouts, and it's very small. But uh, I kind of like that but because I get the feeling just from, you know, the past several months living here that... Uh, that it's it's the poor cousin and so not a lot of people go there so when i go to sprouts there's never a line and there's always just a few people in the store and so i feel better about going going into a store whereas the whole foods it's like if you go there you've got to go early otherwise there's just a lot of people in the store it is a big store but still if you're at all nervous about that these days it is definitely not the store you want to go to in the middle of prime time shopping time. So I was just uh, saying I needed my black and brown because I need to trim up some of these little uh, angry areas that are definitely not great. Hey, MCC, thanks for that resub. But yeah, those are those are the three stores I really like. I mean, we've got a, uh, a, a Safeway, and uh, I've been there with David a couple times, but I eat, I mean... I cook a lot, right? And I and I cook generally. I cook organic and and I cook, um, you know, free range, grass fed when I can, when it's within budget, um, you know. And I do a lot of seafood. And so because I'm cooking all the time, I'm using a lot of produce and meat and spices. I'm not. Um, I don't really need a lot of the stuff at 
like a big grocery store like a regular grocery store so I find that we can get everything we need from the Trader Joe's and Sprouts run pretty much unless unless uh, one of them is out of something and then we have to scramble a little bit but Doo -doo -doo. So I'm adding some yellow toward the edges here because we want to have them be a little more glowy. And I'll probably do all the yellow and then I will go back and kind of trim a bit. Um, because a lot of this stuff's pretty imprecise. Like you can see it's kind of messy and it's gotten outside of the lines. Um, hey, Skelsey. Yeah, well, see, but this is the strategic thing about like going to these all of these grocery stores, no matter because that you learn that there are actually things that are more eco more economical at Whole Foods, especially if you can get the sales. Um, so it's uh, like I actually their scallops, their frozen scallops, um, one of the brands that they carry, are a little less expensive and uh, of a good quality. So it's like in there are certain things that I like getting from Whole Foods or that or that I like getting from, you know, Sprouts. Like I even found back in Denton, uh, Sprouts is even less expensive than Kroger uh, on some stuff. So you got to You just got to pay attention to pricing. But yeah, some of their stuff is just uh, Whole Foods is I mean, we call it whole paycheck for a reason, right? Though it is the only place I've been able to get plantains and we do love making Cuban rice um, with our fried plantains. So Although they've, I guess they must be out of season because they're, uh, we haven't seen plantains there a bit in a bit. I'm not sure when plantains are in season. Like you know, these days in season is such a like up in the air term anyway because, you know, importing stuff from the southern hemisphere and really you've got to look up what's in season in your neighborhood. I don't know if they grow plantains in California. I'd think somebody would. Plantains are tasty. More people ought to have them. Rambutan. Oh yeah, Central Market is amazing. Central Market is like, is like the grand poobah of overpriced grocery stores. <laughs> right, Outer Mama? And yet they have so many amazing things that you just don't find anywhere else. Yes, so shiny, exactly. Um, we used to go to the one down in Dallas every once in a while. Uh, back when I was in Texas, it was quite the trip. You'd, ha you'd have to bring a cooler, but um, yeah. I mean, they've just got, there's just some stuff you can find at those big places that are, you know, it's pricey, but like Whole Foods, like for a treat, I'll go to their meat department because they really have some very, very good quality meats and it ain't cheap, but every once in a while it's worth it. Um, especially when you cook, if you're trying to cook, you know, something really nice. But yeah, I agree. Central Market is the, uh, is the, uh, the tip top of that little pyramid, that food pyramid. The produce section alone, I just wander for days. <laughs> ah. do, do, do. So I'm going to thin down these lines a little bit. Some of them, I'm going to clean them up a little bit. I'm getting to the point where I uh, can make some decisions about how bright I want to take some of this stuff. I've, I've got an overall uh, pretty good effect going on, but I definitely want to bring up these sparks and I want to trim up some of these lines. Some of these lines are very messy because I wasn't paying attention and I want to add a little bit of a glow effect if I can. So... Yeah, I think produce getting, I agree with you there, uh, Twistedoma, that the, you know, getting produce can be risky when you're using a shopping service. I like, uh, oh, wow, that's crazy, Cybestorm. Yeah, that can happen, um, if it's imported, like the, uh, the still hard avocado thing and all that. It's just like, if it's not in season in your local area, that means it's probably been shot up with chemicals to keep it good for longer. And sometimes I think they overdo it. So that's one argument in favor of the going local in season. But of course, you know, then you run into issues because like David and I love Brussels sprouts, like roasted Brussels sprouts is probably our favorite vegetable, like 
hands down. And of course, they're only in season. They're in season like fall through early spring. And then in the summer, like now they're out of season. But we still love them. So we can't eat uh, in season <laughs> as much. Uh, we, we love our Brussels sprouts too much to eat all in season local. Though I am pretty good about fruit in season. Since I don't eat too much of it, I try to just buy strawberries when they're in season. They just don't look as good otherwise. Oh, yeah, Walmart, yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> Instacart. It's just being on Tatooine. I didn't know you lived on Tatooine, Modern Mama. <laughs> but, yeah, I feel that. That's, uh... I mean, there are, I know a couple people who are high risk and it's, you got to use it. Yeah. Walmart. I don't know. I'm usually, I'm not a Walmart fan. Like I walk into their store and I get instantly lost and I'm, I'm just not as much uh, into it, but they do surprise me with the quality that they have sometimes when in the past I have gone to Walmart. So I don't diss Walmart. It's not for me, but I don't diss it. to do so we're just kind of i'm bringing in some darks again i'm trimming this down this is all just kind of the touch up blending phase um once you've got it blacked out and you like the look of it then go through and kind of tighten things up <laughs> no man zeke is funny yeah yeah yes help each other everybody yay reaper community yeah, I know Kroger down in Texas was doing curbside, was or at least was doing, you know, they have a, you can order online and then pick it up. Yeah, you are, uh, yeah, I know. You go just to look at the produce, right? Yeah, yeah, Twisted Oma. And meats, yep. Oh, yes, love the Central Market. I haven't looked to see, I assume there's a Central Market over in San Jose. Like, if there wasn't, I'd be like, what are you doing, Central Market? <laughs> I should, I should actually do that. I should look them up, and one of these, uh, one of these weekend mornings, I should make a pilgrimage to Central Market just to see if anything, you know, jumps into my cart accidentally. I do like finding unusual meat things or really good quality meat things because I, uh, I do like to make fancy dinners for David and I when I have energy. When my dog doesn't give me up 16 times in the night. <laughs> I thought Central Market was elsewhere. I didn't think they were Texas only. Aren't they like, isn't there a big chain that owns them? Like a big, big chain that owns Central Market? Like H-E-B or something? Because if so, I mean, they're doing it wrong, really. If they're not like expanding into like trendy areas of the country. I guess Whole Foods may have taken over on that. But Whole Foods was in trouble like for a while there, so... Hey, Achilles, how's it going? If I had known that Central Market was only in Texas, I would have gone more when I was there. And again, touching up, kind of like um, blending in some of the areas that are rough. And uh, kind of going through looking at, uh, I, missed, I missed that part right there. Touching up the stuff you missed, like this little line here that I missed making orange because it's kind of on the, the edge. That's looking pretty okay, though. That's getting there. Ah, owned by H-E-B. I knew they owned one of those big, you know, one of those big uh, letter things. Only 10 stores. Interesting. Well, I'm glad I got to Central Market while I was in Texas then. Whole Foods will just have to be my surrogate does surprise me though it surprises me that the central market people have not expanded beyond unless like whole foods they have a hard time um with their bottom line in which case if they you know i could see them holding off then especially now in these times i certainly wouldn't expect expansion but it's kind of odd if they're i guess if they're just a local you know or just that's maybe this that they decided that that's just their market Uh, 
Alrighty, let's bring up some of this yellow and up into white because we've got we've gone up into white on some of these places, but we haven't been consistent about it. And we want all the edges and the big blocks of uh, fire to look really bright. So that means going up to near white at their widest parts in the center. That's how you make that glow effect. You've got to go up that high. It ain't gonna look like it's glowing unless you bring it up close to white. That's just the way that you simulate glow with paint. The hotter, the hotter it looks, the brighter you take it. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm gluten free, so whole grain, no longer in my diet. I do other things for fiber. Been gluten free for a very long time now. Though David sometimes uh, entices me with um, the tasty garlicky croutons that he gets for salad, because those are tasty. But otherwise, I'm pretty good at resisting it. I don't really miss it. I was never a big bread person. And again, bringing it up close to white to get that nice hot look. And what I'll have to do is figure out if I want to just focus on the edges or if I also want to bring it up hot toward the middle here where these big spots are. And I think I do. So I saw that they announced um, last month that... Uh, Blizzard has announced that a oh, WoW Shadowlands is going to come in the fall, come heck or high water, even if they have to ship it from their home, their homes, quote unquote. So I'm excited about that. Haven't played WoW. All this last expansion I skipped out. But David and I are getting to where we're looking for another game to play together. So right now we're playing Overwatch for the summer games seasonal stuff. Alrighty, got some more yellow there. I wanted to widen that area just a little bit. And I've got all my oranges open. Keeping all your colors open when you're working back and forth like this is really advisable. No, Mathophile sculptors usually do what looks good and they don't pay attention to physics. I, uh, I gross about this regularly on videos. When you're trying to do a freehand, it just does not work. Yeah, you kind of just have to fudge it. You can't be, you don't need to be precise with freehand, so don't feel like you, um, I mean, all you, I don't know if you're, you're on my Patreon, but I don't know. I did freehand for um, a couple of things, and I talk about the fact that you don't have to be precise with spacing out your designs when you're going in and out of folds. All you have to do is make it look fairly, like, representative. Nobody's going to try to figure out how much cloth fabric is actually back in that fold and see if you did the design quote unquote correctly. But yeah, it's uh, most cloth is definitely not depicted very realistically by miniatures or model sculptors, especially when they're stretching it. If it's like, like going out in the wind or it tends to, if they're having it flare to the side, it tends to not be quite correct. Tends to be, this looks awesome, let's do this. Which is, you know, it's artistic license, but when you're doing freehand, it can be difficult. Yeah, WoW ate like a decade of my life back when it first came out, Coovs. But uh, these days, since I am like committed to computer gaming again, just because that's how David and I like detox in the evenings. Uh, I don't so much mind opening up WoW again. Like, it's never going to addict me like it used to. I've been able to go back and do some of the new expansions without really, you know, losing my mind over it. I'll, like, play for a couple weeks, and then I'm off. Um, so, not too concerned. But yeah, I do enjoy it. I mean, I go back and I'm like, oh yeah, wow. <laughs> and it, because it still feels just like wow. Um, 
but uh, eh. we're just looking for a little bit of something different. We've played through all the Borderlands content almost. We've, uh, you know, we do our Overwatch, but we don't want to do Overwatch like all the time. We like to switch in other games. We did our Path of Exile this league. The problem with Path of Exile is just David gets so far ahead when he's really into it. <laughs> and I just, I'm like, ah, well. Panthera, they look uh, good, but they don't look like as dynamically amazing <laughs> as sculptors tend to make them look. If you know what I mean. Ah, the family doesn't want the licensing problems of other states. They tried Louisiana. Well, that makes sense, MCC. I mean, bummer for the rest of us, right? But I guess it opens up uh, opportunities for other grocery stores, so. I wonder if there's, like, a different, like, locally owned super high-end grocery store in this area, then. It seems weird that Silicon Valley wouldn't have some amazing... I mean, maybe it is Whole Foods. Maybe Whole Foods is just the way they go. Because the Whole Foods here is super nice. Like, it is the nicest Whole Foods I have ever been in. The one here in, uh, I guess, it, is it in Sunnydale? I think it's still in Mountain View, technically. But, boy, it's swank. <laughs> it's a super swank uh, Whole Foods, for sure. So maybe Whole Foods just did what Kroger did with Kroger Signature, and they just uh, upscale their stores, depending on location. Because I used to go to a Whole Foods, uh, you know, down in... Um, a little bit south of Louisville and Flower Mound. And uh, it was nice, but the one here is really nice. I don't know. I mean, like I said, the Whole Foods is really good, Panthera. Like, it's like a special treat for me. Before the COVID, it was a special treat for me to go there. But that said, I see what you mean, because uh, a lot of the Silicon Valley, like, locations, like, it's an interesting mix. There are, there's a lot more local business here than I expected, actually, although a lot of it is in trouble now because of the pandemic. Um, but I was actually pleasantly surprised at the number of non-chain restaurants and local businesses and all that sort of thing um, that I saw when I came here, when I first moved here. I like that kind of thing. I, when I was in college, I was at college at UW-Madison and State Street was still like had a lot of um, like local business on it, which is the street that goes up to the Capitol, it's full of shops and restaurants. And uh, by the time I left Madison, like big chain stores had started to move in like the Gap and all that. And a lot of the little stores had closed down or been bought out. And I don't like that. I think that little local businesses sometimes have more interesting stuff. I like supporting local business a lot. Alrighty, so we're getting pretty good there. Oh yeah, the raid stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for wow, yeah. Yes, it does feel like another job. I was I was raiding in vanilla. Yep. I used to work for Pegasus Games, Scrying Eye. You could ask Lori, who owns Pegasus, about Anne Forster, and she would be like, oh yes, Anne used to work for us. I uh, also used to paint regularly at Last Square, um, which is out on the west side, and they are uh, mostly a historical gaming store, though they have a lot of Reaper and Warhammer now, I believe, if they're still around. But uh, Bev over there knows me as well. I used to paint there. I actually was painting there the summer before I moved, and the summer after I moved back. Um... I used to teach at their store. But yeah, I worked at Pegasus uh, back in, gosh, when I got out of college, back in the 90s. Uh, I used to work down when they had a State Street location, and uh, then I worked a bit on the west side when I was out there. That's uh, actually Pegasus is responsible for me getting into Warhammer, which made me into a Golden Demon winner, which caused me to go commission painting and competition painting, which caused me to get my job at Reaper. So there you go. Square is closed. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, last square always had, like they were doing really well when I was still in Madison. Like they had just like bought the space next to them, but 
it makes sense to me. They had a lot of stuff that wasn't really um, doing well for them. They had a lot of inventory that wasn't moving, so. Still, it's sad. They were an institution. Lori sold Pegasus last year. Oh, okay. Well, good. She owned it for so long. I'm glad she's still helping the new owners. Game stores are hard to make it work. Like, you have to have a good, a good head for it. It's not just a toy. So I hope that, uh, I hope Pegasus does well. I hope Pegasus prospers. Yeah, long time. Because she had it for a while before I uh, worked there. And now it's, you know, it's been a good 20 years since I worked there or more. Yeah, do so, Coops. Whenever you think something is your best paint job, put it up. Tell us so. Tell us whether you want feedback to make it even better or whether you just want us all to admire it, too. Sometimes when stuff is posted, I'm like, oh, I could make a suggestion. But I'm like, no, they posted it just to have posted it to done. They don't want me to suggest anything. It's done. All right. More brightness along the edges of the blade. Yeah, I liked Final Fan the new Final Fantasy when I tried it, the Final Fantasy Online. Um, and then they, they had, like, login issues. They had this huge spate of login issues, and I had the hardest time. I just couldn't seem to reactivate my account, and I was just like, all right, I'm done. Sorry, Final Fantasy. You have, uh, you have officially, uh, you should have you should have worked harder on this. <laughs> it's funny you say that, Aang, because that seems to be the common problem for everybody. Yeah, with Final Fantasy? Yeah. Yeah, they're... So, like, the actual game is fantastic. It it's is. It's complex. It's got a lot of fun to it. Yeah. But getting into the game can be a migraine and a half. Right. And it's like, why don't you fix this square? Like, what? WTF, right? It's like... Yeah, there's, like, three different portals you can log into. They're all three different accounts. Uh... Even, even though you can use one to log into the other if you choose to. But if Ugh. not, you could accidentally make another account. It's pretty... It's pretty rough. Yeah, I mean, I remember even with Final Fantasy XI, which was my first MMO, that was that they still had login issues back then. Not not as bad as this though. Like this is like a whole new level of square ridiculous. So yeah, I I haven't picked the game back up. Like I look at it every once in a while. I get attracted to it because I remember how much fun I was having with it and how beautiful. Of course, their games are always gorgeous. Um, you know, but then I remember, you know, oh yeah, the login issue. I don't know if I want to mess with that. <laughs> yeah we actually all picked it back up my brother and and company and friends and stuff wait there's like nine of us now in a yeah big company oh good yeah we've been playing for the last month or so sweet yeah it is a good i mean i really had fun with the game i don't remember what i was playing i think I, usually i go white mage so most likely i was that yeah coops i'm with you there i tried elder scrolls online too because i loved skyrim and i played oblivion as well and uh yeah it just wasn't quite there wasn't quite there for me I also didn't like that, like, the whole dungeon, I don't know. I, I don't, There are some games that make it very easy to pug a dungeon to get a pickup group. Like, WoW has really gotten it down, and I really enjoy that. But um, but ESO was still uh, wait outside the dungeon and try to talk to people and convince them that you wanted to go into the dungeon. And I was not a fan. At least when I was playing it. Yeah, I played it when it first launched, and then I tried it again probably less than a year ago just to kind of check it out because it's free to play i think or something oh is it yeah it's, yeah so and it doesn't feel the problem is i get in and i play it and i see the environment and all it makes me want to do is go play skyrim yeah it wants me to makes me want to play a real elder scrolls game not that it's not but it's well really but it's not. not no it's really it, not yeah i agree yeah it's, it's not the experience people come to expect right right i mean i get why they were trying to do it but the money for them is i think in in, if they can do another Skyrim, if they can manage to land another Skyrim, that's their cash cow. But they need to really figure out, I guess, a, a setting that would do that. Skyrim was just so good. I, yeah, and I will say to Valando's point, though, ESO has undergone in the last handful of years some serious development. Oh, so, yeah. like, it's it's widely accepted today as a pretty good MMO. Oh, all right. It's just you have to like 
like the style that it has, right? And if you don't, if you get in and don't immediately like the combat and the way that it feels, you're not gonna like the game. But right. it, they did do a massive overhaul of it. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, not like it I have definitely a definitely better. Not like I have a crap ton of time to computer game these days, but uh... I, you know what? I'm with you. Like I hardly have any time for 14. I like because of the nature of the game, I can log on and do whatever, right? Like I don't have right. to. It's like not like WoW, right? Where I have a handful of things I can do ultimately, and they all take an amount of time that's unreasonable. <laughs> it didn't used to be that way. It used to be that you could go into WoW, you know, run a couple of dailies or run a few quests and just drop it again. And it's a shame that it doesn't feel like that anymore. All right, so we've got a nice thing. Now I want to bring up these little sparks. Obsessed with Final Fantasy XIV at the moment? Yeah, yeah. So am I, Liquid Nebula. So am I. Like, that's pretty much the only game I play and have for the last month. Um, Mathophile, WoW is a grind when it first releases, and then they make the expansion easier and easier as time goes on, as they're trying to attract people to it. So for the hardcore people, when it comes out, it is a grind for sure. Um, and then it gets a bit less grindy. Like, if you go down to the last expansion, like, it is not grindy at all. They're trying to enable you to see the content and get to the new content as quickly as possible. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's it I as the life of the expansion goes on, it does it becomes so much more like uh, quick accessible. Yeah. Versus like when it first comes out, they definitely cater more to the people who can play eighteen hours a day. Yeah, the hardcore people. Yeah, they're totally. Yeah. And I mean, I guess if you're gonna cater to both audiences, that is a good way to do it to scale it over time. You know, it's not like I take it takes them much time to correct course. Um, but they definitely do give it a time there for the hardcore people to really like grind their little hearts out and they do have a sizable yeah. hardcore audience. So, I mean, I guess, you know, although all that being said, I'm going to be honest, I did love classic. Wow. And I yes. do love, I feel like it's, it's that like climbing Everest feeling, but I do feel like I can log on and take like 20 steps up the mountain and then just log off. Yep. Whereas now it does feel like I need to complete more in the time that I've spent, which is weird so yeah yeah it is yep i do love classic wow so i did get back into it but then i realized i realized how it had addicted me the first time and i was like i'm gonna back off slowly <laughs> and not get totally addicted to this again i mean it helped because of course when wow when vanilla first launched i had like a group of 20 friends who were all playing it together but um and i didn't have it with vanilla well, I'm just saying, if you, uh, well, BC, we hope BC gets launched too as a classic server here in the next year. Oh. And, and that, let's be honest, and BC and Wallach were like the golden ages of the game. Well, I, I include Lich King in the golden age, though. I was yeah, not no, a huge, I, I wasn't a huge Burning uh, Crusade. I thought that was actually, when it started, it was kind of a crappy expansion, to be fair. Um, yeah, it, it had some, when it, yeah. It had right. issues. When BC first launched, it did. It had issues. They had to balance some stuff. But when, by the end of BC, it was it was perfect, really, in my opinion. And then I agree that Watlek is really where I have some of the best memories of that game I have ever had. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Lich King was my favorite, too, um, uh, Coops. And uh, Pandaria was second, actually, because I loved the Pandaria story, and it was a beautiful expansion. I, I, it was funny, too, because I totally was down on Pandaria when it first came out. I'm like, pandas? Seriously? And then I decided just for the hell of it. I don't know. I didn't, I had some time and I was like, yeah, I'll go check it out. And then it turned out being like my favorite, like second favorite expansion, even with pandas. You know, I, I actually kind of agree with you there too. That it's an unpopular opinion. Most people hated that expansion. Yeah. It seemed like it, the wide acceptance was, wasn't that great. People kind of said, Ew, pandas. And, but honestly, and between you and I, and uh -huh. I guess everyone in chat here, it was probably the most beautiful scenic oh yeah uh, expansions i have ever. like every zone felt so rich and amazing mm -hmm. I, I don't know that i've had that i mean Watlick was good for that but this was just i just remember every time i entered a zone it was like whoa yeah yeah exactly and the story was great i mean and like it just it was yeah it was it was a great expansion i mean yeah it is an unpopular opinion but i i will stand up for my pandas i mean i pandas i could still give or take but pandas themselves but uh but yeah the, i i loved that expansion and the mounts and pets were some of the best oh, i think yeah. wow was ever done completely agree like those those uh those dragons yeah the uh, celestial the, dragons were yes. amazing yeah and there were so many the ones modeled after i guess the, is it the chinese dragon yeah is that what it is? yep 
Yeah, like I have, I have my Celestial Thundering Cloud Serpent, and it is still one of my favorite mounts. Yeah, <laughs> so cool. yes. But if you decide, whatever reason, Anne, that you get completely bored and you want to try fourteen again for whatever reason, get in touch um, with we you. We all huh? play. Okay. Yes. Well, I was gonna tell you, we all play on Diabolo, so it's pretty easy to remember because it's okay. like Diablo, basically. Right. All right. All right. I can I can remember that, and if I do decide that I need uh, to sync my time, absolutely. I don't know if David is a Final Fantasy fan. I don't. I somehow think he might not be. Maybe I can talk him into it though. It's it's one of those things where like even if you're not an MMO fan, there's so much that it offers. Like there's yeah. just so much little stuff. Like crafting in this game is is so. You know, oh yeah, I've, cra I've always liked crafting in the Final Fantasy games, actually, and I am—I love crafting, so it, it is—it uh, is kind of an attraction to me that it is so good. All right, so let's see here. If I want to make this glow, guys, I may have to work. I may have to do some underpainting here. Uh, I just tried to put a little bit of my volcanic orange down, but over the walnut without underpainting, it just is not working. So I'm gonna throw some water into my white, thin it way down, see if I can layer up some glow. And see if I like it. And I'm mostly going to try it around, like, this area. Maybe maybe I'll make the entire edge glow. I haven't decided. I may just decide to go back to this. I like how this looks right now. But it feels like it needs just something a little bit more. Um, let's see here. Yeah, sorry, Shadow Raven. We, we, we hit the wow chord and just uh, just ran with it. Um, the Google, fa Google Fatter Cat mount. Yes, I think I've seen that, actually. Um... Now he has best stream ever, right? <laughs> You're somewhat biased, Everlina. <laughs> yeah, Everlina so yes, somewhat, somewhat biased here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been kind of waiting for the next game to come out that makes me. The problem is that, that if I'm in a computer game, I want to play with with David if I can, and so um, a lot of the games coming out, you know, that are just single player, just don't do anything. Uh, because it's like, well, I, I can't play it with David, and he's the one I play computer games with right now. So, um, yeah. so yeah, yeah we'll I see. mean, 14 has got a, fa like, my brother and his uh, fairly new girlfriend. I don't know what she is to him at this point, I'm going to be honest. But, <laughs> well, you know, that's where uh, you... They, they, yeah, they started at level one together, and they're now level 50, and they've gone entirely to the main story quest together the entire time, watching yeah. all the cutscenes. It's it's like playing a single-player game with somebody. It's, it's hmm. kind of cool, actually. All right. Well, maybe, maybe I'll give it a try because I gave it a try back in the day, and I do. They've got cat people, don't they? <laughs> they do. They and do. that's what and I, I play. <laughs> and I will tell you that when I started back up a month ago, I abandoned my old account completely. I know I, that's that's awful to say. But yes. I try to recover it, and it's just as bad yeah. as you would think. Yeah, I'm going um, to abandon. So I was like, you know what? Yeah. It's on sale for 30 bucks to get basically everything in the game total right now. I'm yeah. just going to buy it and move on. It's yep. not worth the effort. Yeah, I agree. That's what I would do. I would totally uh, just buy it and move on. Um, cause it's, yeah, it's 30 bucks. I've never begrudged MMOs, the money that they charge either, you know, for the, for the base game or for expansions or for any of that stuff, because I yeah. get so much enjoyment out of it when I'm running one hours and hours of enjoyment. And when I break it down into the per hour cost, even oh, with a subscription, fantastic. it's fantastic. It's, it's better than going by far better than going to the movies or whatever else you're going to do, you know? Completely agree. Yeah, and so I never, I like, I will gladly give the MMO country com yeah, companies uh, my money um, and not grouse about the fact that it's not free or it's not this or that or I have to pay for an expansion. As they've got to get, yeah, yeah I, I enjoy it too much. I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. All right, so let's try to do glowies. Yeah, I love the thirty dollar collection because it comes with uh, thirty days of game time plus the three expansions in the base game like it's it's kind of like where wow was mm -hmm. you know like a year ago when they were in between yeah yeah oh the mikote uh do they get the zoomies i would imagine they look like they would get the zoomies no man's <laughs> yeah and yeah exactly and enjoying a movie is so hit or miss too right side storm right because yeah these days no, actually, Twisted Oma, not really, because uh, if you look at the races of my characters in WoW, uh, Worgen are where it's at. I have a kennel <laughs> of characters, <laughs> a kennel's worth of characters. It's just that Final Fantasy doesn't make dog people, they make cat people, and I also have had cats in my life. Um, so yeah, I totally, uh, I like the Mikote, or the Mithra in the old uh, Final Fantasy XI. Remember, Final Fantasy XI was my first ever MMO, so I'm going to yeah, try to do the say... Edge. 
Mm-hmm. We don't refer to any of these races as what they are in this game at all. In fact, I don't even know what they are half the time. Yeah. For instance, I refer to the bigger dudes as Galka. They're not yep. Galka in this game. I, I nope. refer to the Lollafell as Taru Taru. <laughs> yep, 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 because of the original game. Yeah, me too. I'm always like Mithra, or uh, whatever the M word is. Yeah. No, it's it's Mithra, you're right. Yeah. They also added bunny people to this one. If oh, dear. Fancy. I am not a bunny person. All right, so let's do a little bit of layering, guys, here. What I'm doing is I'm just doing a real quick layer, see, into my lighter blend here. Because anything that's this yellow-white is going to be glowing much more than anything else over here. So I'm going to just pretty much do a layering stroke look right into that. I still want to see the demarcation line here between these things. But I want it so... There. So you see it. So I want that sort of effect there. And I think I want maybe even a little bit more along the edge here, as if the edge is also glowing. So I want to kind of blend that in to this crack and make it kind of like that. I don't think I like it here, so I'm going to rub that out because there's no reason. Just thinned white. I mean, uh, I mean, it, okay, when you're painting with white to the point where you need it to thin it to, to uh, layer with it, it's pretty much a glaze, Mathavile. Um, I mean, when it comes down to it, when you are layering, you are painting with a wash or a glaze. You're just doing it controlled. You're not. It's the application that makes a difference there. Although technically, if you're going to glaze with white, you need to throw even more water into it. You need to have it like f one to four or one to five, um, which is insane, but true. So I'm going to kind of fuzz that line out so I get more of a glow right around there. And I'm going to kind of put my volcanic orange in a thin glaze. I'm going to build a volcanic orange glaze. And this time I am going to glaze because I'm going to just put one single layer all over the top of that little line and see. Oh, yeah. So do your heroes was fun. Hey, Grano Cookies. Thanks for the sub. Or I should say the re-sub. All right, so let's turn this around and let's just... Now, I don't want to cover any of my glowing, my original glowing crack with this uh, volcanic orange. I just want to make a bit of a glow effect coming toward that line. And I'm going to just decide if I like it. And I'm not sure it is worth it at this point, looking at it. I'm not picking up a lot of the color. Trying to figure out if if this is a good step. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Sometimes you just want to try something because you feel like, well, it should. It, it might be cool. It might. And so then you do it and you're like, well, not really. Not really. Um, I could try it around this entire thing. The one thing that this would allow me to do if I decide to go with this is it would allow me to suggest some form for these stones, like some volume for these stones by, um, by doing that glowy highlight. So that is one thing that it, that it could do, especially if I make it a little bit irregular, like there are cracks and stuff in the stone. So it would allow me to get like a little bit more detail into these just blank spots, right? Although if the bright glow is bright enough, these black spots would be pretty much black. So it is hard. It is hard. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I've heard good things about Neverwinter. It's not quite... I've watched people play it. It's not quite my cup of tea like with Nebula, but thanks for the suggest. So let's see here. Still trying to kind of figure out well, how and what I want to do here. And I'm experimenting just with this one place. Because I still feel like maybe I want some detail in these areas. And maybe the answer is just to fill it with little fire motes like I did here. Like little fireflies. Because um, that's a cool effect and I like it. But part of me is like, well, I kind of want to suggest more. So I want to play around with this little area. And there's no nothing but time wasted here. Because, I mean, it's easy as pie to just go back in and fill this in with uh, walnut or black and brown. So if it doesn't work at this one area, that's why it's nice to just take one area and go, all right, let's try this. Let's see if it, let's see if it looks good. 
And then I'm going to build up my white a little bit more. And then I'm going to glaze over it and see. And it may be that I need to use a brighter orange for the glaze, but I really feel like volcanic is where it's at. Then I might just do some little speckles. And then let's glaze and see. Oh, you're going to get people migrating other games no matter what MMO you do. I mean, all of us gamers have such limited attention spans. All right, so I'm going to glaze my volcanic orange over this whole thing. Speaking of which, Miss Ann, I went ahead and added, since this comes up pretty regularly because uh -huh. we like our video games here, um, I added a video game discussion channel to the general channel in the Discord. So oh, neat. If everyone here wants to share what MMOs they're playing or what games they're playing aren't MMOs, anything like that, feel free to go over there and talk about it. Um, Super. And you can even share, you know, server locations, that kind of stuff. Because we could. We should all, if possible, link up on the same server for whatever game we're all playing. There's no yeah, because, I mean, we're all looking for people to play with when we play these things. I mean, because it's the most fun when you're with people and you have enough people to run a dungeon or whatever, you know. So, definitely. Right. Definitely. We have a Reaper community. Let's use it. So, I just did another layer of white to see if I could get it even more interesting. I don't know that I like this for an effect over the whole sword, but I'm still messing around. Like, experimenting is where it's at. And you know what? I might not like this effect here, but I could remember it, and then in a future model I might be thinking of doing, like, lava like on a lava dragon, you know, and, or, and maybe think about this pattern for its wings, you know? So, nothing, no experimentation is ever wasted, right? It's never a bad idea to put some of your time into experimenting like even if you decide not to use the the technique or the the uh appearance of the thing um it's it's never wasted it's always it's always a good idea to do a little bit of experimentation i don't know i just keep going back and forth i'm like well it looks cool but do i want that over the whole sword like i'm not certain i really am not i'm just like well maybe i need to do a couple of panels and see but the thing with the little fireflies is, uh, if you guys didn't see, it's just to use a thinned volcanic orange and build up a couple of layers of it with like concentric circles and blobs. Then come in with your um, your sunrise orange and a little bit of that lantern yellow and start making little little pinpoint dots and then finish it up with like uh, little dots of pinpoint lantern yellow and white. Um, and make them varied. Like not all of them will be as bright. Some of them will be tiny. You know, that way you can get kind of that fire moat effect on the interior um, I, I see. I really, I like this effect, but yeah, I just can't decide if I like it enough. And it's going to take time, as you can see. This is the kind of like freehand effect, where unlike with the just the the plain lava veins, this freehand effect could take some time to do because you're layering and you're technically doing freehand. So to do the entire sword like this would definitely take up a lot of time. So that's, that's a consideration, right? You, you always want to think about, you know, not only does this look good, but is this the amount of time I really want to spend on this model? Like if I'm going to do this, like it almost has to be done to a competition level. Whereas if you were kind of planning on doing, you know, just kind of a, a gaming, a high end gaming model, then this is way too much work. Right. So let me get my hand out of the picture so I get color back. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's always that balance of trying to figure out, I want it to look cool. Does it look the way I want it to look? And does it look that way in the time frame that I want it to look that way? Or would I be better off and happier with the model if I just went on and, uh, just started on the NMM, you know, or, or I finished up my glitters here. Cause I do want my glowing runes to be a little bit different. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know guys. Not sure. Yeah, let's back out of it and see. Because sometimes when you're too close, you want to look at it at a distance. Hmm. Well, see, at a distance, it does look pretty cool. Well, yeah, we're Gurgi, but is it like 20 hours of work memorable? <laughs> what could you be doing in that 20 hours? You know, it's like, for me especially. Um, true metallic metal, uh, <sighs> a scry guy, I really don't know if you could carry this off with TMM. 
I really don't think you could. Um, maybe if you were using scorched metal, maybe. But the problem is you run into the same thing. Ah, it's just so hard to do TMM. It's hard to do something that's going to reflect the light based on the room you're in and trying to force a lighting effect onto it. It's really difficult. It's really, really difficult. Much more difficult than doing it entirely with flat paint. I don't think I would ever try this with TMM. Uh, just because, yeah, it's it's so problematic when you have places that shine naturally and then you're trying to say, oh no, it's actually shining like this right over the top of that shiny thing. Do you get what I'm, get what I'm saying? So it's, uh, you really... Yeah, you really want to think about when you're choosing metallics versus choosing NMM, NMM's advantage is that you can control all the lighting. Metallic's weakness is that you can't. But metallic's bonus is that, you know, you can still do some really memorable, beautiful effects with it. Just you have to give up control. Like you can kind of control it by doing like washes and glazes and taking the metallic down in various ways. But it can be very hard to force a lighting effect on metallics. So there are advantages to metallics and there are disadvantages to metallics. Um, and I just didn't like the metallics that I was doing. I mean, I, I did some decent metallics on the other side of the sword. But it's just like it does its own shine thing. And you can't control that shine thing. So when you try to do an effect over it, like I can give it rust because the rust isn't shiny. But... Can I make it appear to have a, you know, a glowing effect on it? It's going to fight me every step of the way, depending on how I layer up that shine. So, like, maybe you could have used a tiny bit of metallic. Like, maybe if I came in here with some adamantium black, like, really in the middle, maybe, or some scorched metal. But it's, uh, it's rough. It's rough. You're definitely not making it easy for yourself if you try to. I might be able to do a simpler version of it. I mean, I'd be more likely to just, if I was going to do, if I was going to do something simpler, I would just go for the fire motes. I would just go for the little fireflies and do that. Um, if this, if you're going to do this, you're going to do this and you're not just going to do it in two spots. You're going to do it consistently. Otherwise it's not going to look right. Um, and trying to simplify it didn't look nearly as good as complexifying it. Cause I started remember with a very simple glow effect and I didn't like it. So, yeah. Now, the one thing this is going to do, if if I do this across the whole sword, it is going to lighten the sword, and it's going to make it more complicated. Um, it's not going to be just as, as big and showy. So that's one question I can ask myself is, if when I'm putting it on this guy, let's zoom out. When I'm putting it on this guy, do I want this effect behind him, which is more complex and it needs closer look? Or do I want just the big, bold, fiery lava effect behind him? Which is, by itself, pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's... You really, at this point, you gotta ask yourself what your goal is. Oh, there's, like, some people use baking soda, meth file, or other things like that to give, like, a rusted, a built-up rusted effect. Um, there are weathering powders, which if you use them with solvents, you can build up a caked texture. Um, some people mix spacing materials into glue and use that. Um, some people use green stuff. I like using green stuff if I'm going to do texture because then I can actually sculpt a bit more than I can do with like baking soda. Um, so it, it, everybody, the people use different things. There's, uh, there's all sorts of techniques for that sort of thing. And you could do it on NMM too if you really want some more texture. Yeah, I mean, I like this, but I don't think I want to do it over this whole sword. And I'm not sure that it really adds anything to the giant. Because remember, also, we're spending a lot of time up here. And yes, this is an important focal point because it's near his face, right? But we're also taking away from his face by doing something that's like 20 hours of work on the sword. <laughs> Which is, although important, not as important as the giant himself. And so for me, I think maybe I'm going to wipe that out and maybe just try to do more of a glowy effect on edges. I'm not sure. Hmm. I may table it and try to bring my, I do want to bring in my little, this, this effect up a bit more glowy. I'm not going to wipe it out yet. I'm going to keep it for now, just in those two spots. So I can kind of think about it because, uh, 
I just think to myself that unless I was doing this model for competition, I would never finish that. And if I do finish it, like the real question is, is it going to overwhelm and be more interesting visually than some of the stuff that's like around his face? You don't want this incredible sword that you spent 20 hours painting and you look at people come and look at your awesome fire giant and all they do is say, oh God, that sword. Like you don't want that. You want us to say, oh, that fire giant. You want him to say that about the whole piece. And so what I would probably do is leave this, bring up the area, the few areas remaining that I really want to bring up, like the, the runes and uh, like glaze that edge. Um, and then work on this other, these other parts. And after I'm done with these other parts, then I'll be able to see better. Is this balanced? Like, is it, is it distracting or is it good? Um, and I'll make my judgment call then. I mean, the problem here is that you don't have much face to work with. These giants have really recessed features with the helmets and everything, and they're not as crisp and sharp as, as they could be sometimes. <clears throat> so that makes it hard to keep your focal point. So you've got to, it's, it, it'll really depend on how I treat like all this jewelry and detailing right close to his face. But I don't want to overwhelm the model with the sword. <laughs> Thanks, Goose. Yeah, he does look a, a bit like Reaper John, doesn't he? Reaper John, the Fire Giant King. Maybe, maybe it is a Reaper John action figure, and we just didn't know. All right, I'm gonna glaze. That said, I'm gonna glaze my volcanic orange over this edge that I've highlighted in the white. But now I have like a. Um, I have a victory condition now. I need to finish out the face area and the stuff around the hand here in order to judge whether I want to, which, which technique I want to keep up here on the sword. So that at least gives me, you know, a goal and uh, a way to think about the model. I'm going to grab some of my sunrise and we're going to go down again and I'm going to get that edge. Oh, do we need yellow Crocs if it's a John action figure? Am I going to have to do conversion here? There. That edge is nice. So I kind of like that. Um, you know, just, just picking out that edge with a bit of volcanic and sunrise orange. It's really messy right now, but... Could bring some of the edges up a little more and then blend that into that. So that's nice actually. So I may just need to do something like this on these other areas um, and dispense with that. That actually sounds, that's actually kind of pretty cool. I think I could manage to make that work and it's only a little bit of work. The layering isn't as much work. there to make it glow um no valandar there's extra texture like you can build up layers of like baking soda or weathering powders people use it usually for rust and corrosion effects or for gr for dirt built up dirt and grime yeah and it's usable on either nmm or tmm I mean, whatever you really want to. Yeah, I like this more, this um, this just glowing the edge out. I like that a bit more. And it still will allow me to do a little bit of texture work if I want to in here, if I like introduce some stony texture to suggest that the sword isn't quite smooth. Um, but that's up to me. Throw some water into my black and brown here. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So yeah. So given between the two of these guys, I kind of like this one a little bit better than that one. So I may just have to do more stuff like that here. Um, I may even want to use a knife because this is bones, right? So we can, so I could use a knife to even carve out more of these nicks along the blade edge. Cause there are a fair number of nicks, but they're fairly regular. 
Um, but I could use my hobby knife easily to kind of like, you know, chunk out little parts of this blade and make the edge of it more irregular like it is there and there. Um, and uh, by doing that, give myself more interesting stuff to highlight. <laughs> Tell Lori that's awesome. And it's uh, good to hear from her. And congrats on selling the store. And I, uh, I hope she's enjoying her retirement. Yeah, it's been a long time since I got back to Madison. Now that Dave, since David actually taught there, I'm thinking that he and I might need to do a a field trip to Madison since my family is still in Wisconsin, although they're down south. Yeah, thanks, Scrying Eye. So I'm going to block that out with a little bit of brown, actually. Because I decided that I like the other effect better. But I'm going to remember that effect for the future. So that's actually a little bit better. I think there's still stress in the art world, <laughs> but it's a different kind of stress method file. I mean, I do love working in the art world. There we go. So now let's bring in that edge and uh, think about doing some volcanic orange highlighting along the edge of this uh, area. The nice thing about the edge glow is too that you could just make it a little bit irregular if you wanted to. So that's a little better. I like that a little bit better. Oh yeah, have fun. Thanks for the thanks for the communicating with Lori Scrying Eyes. Good to hear from her and good to see you. Yeah, I, I guess that that that's true, Mathophile. When switching jobs, it's like best probably to figure out exactly where your stress is coming from and, and really ask yourself if uh, change changing career gets you, gets you away directly from that sort of stress. But yeah, I mean, you should always aim to be in a career that makes you, that you would like, that you enjoy, that, you know, is interesting to you. Something that you feel like is really the career for you. My dad always felt like I was foolish for pursuing this sort of ideal, but now I have the job exactly that I want, so. In fact, working for Reaper, I mean, I've had, like, two dream jobs in my life. Like, I've got, I've had more dream jobs than, three jo three dream jobs now, counting this one. Yeah, sadly, they have not uh, really embraced that mentality, um, not the file. But yeah, I've always, it's been rocky financially over the course of my life to have gone for jobs that I enjoyed and felt I could make a difference in, but it has worked out in the end for me. So, I mean, Reaper was definitely a dream job. And if I hadn't had the guts to like really commit to my painting and really get better at it and um, try to, you know, become like one of the best at it. I wouldn't have been invited to Reaper and I would never have gotten offered the job at Reaper, would never have made the paint line, you know, so, but it was rocky. It was definitely, there were definitely rocky times for me financially on that road. So it was a lot of mental stress in a different way, but in the end, it's like, you know, where do you want to be? You can be wherever you want to be, but you got to commit to it and understand that it might not be easy. It might make more stress than you're under right now. <laughs> But then again, it might not. It might be awesome. There's a certain amount of awesome just in working toward doing what you really want to do.
So here, I'm, I'm kind of doing what I was doing before, but I'm doing a lot faster. I'm not bothering with a lot of underpainting. I'm underpainting the edge, and then I'm going to carry it in as much as I care to. But I'm not really going to worry about a heavy glow further in where these smaller um, things are. Right, Panthera, right. See, that was actually, I was starting to have some physical issues. Um, just, you know, getting older and, you know, my back was never great from the time I was a teenager. And so uh, working at Reaper in the paint department was starting to get very uh, taxing for me. So it was, uh, it was great that Reaper um, allowed me to transition into this instead. Uh, it really was uh, a lifesaver. Because, yeah, you, there's definitely um, downsides to physical stress as well. Like my, once my back went out, it was, it seemed that I'd done some permanent damage to it. So, so yeah, I mean, it's a trade-off. It's just, I think you're going to have stress in anything you go into if you care about what you're doing. But the question is, is the stress manageable and are you working toward what you really want to do? Yeah, stress, is, prolonged stress is bad in any form. Like, I agree with that. Just bad for you physically and mentally. It's seems to be the white elephant in the room, though, a lot of the time. Because, as you say, Mathophile, mental stress can certainly cause physical stress uh, and problems. Sometimes I agree with Sadie that everybody could use a little therapy. <laughs> I never believed that until I went through the divorce and got marriage counseling. And it was actually so awesome that I kept going after the divorce. I actually had an, I actually scheduled an appointment with my therapist just to tell her how things had turned out. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I bet you never get any closure, <laughs> ah, but she'd been so awesome that, uh, it was, uh, it was great to just, it's great to just talk to somebody about your stuff. If you don't have like a spouse or a friend or somebody who you, feel like you want to talk to about some of your stress sometimes it can help to honestly just get, get go to a therapist find a find somebody who who uh kind of fits your groove and go talk to them every once in a while i mean yeah it's money but it was worth it for me Oh, everybody's got brain weasels. Glittery Canine, you have the best name ever. Glittery Canine. Kiri, now I want to go and sprinkle glitter on Kiri, just to exemplify that. Yeah, work environment is important, Dragon Eye. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> wow, this looks much cooler than yesterday. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad I've done something, Val. <laughs> I kind of doubted. I was I was working so uh, so organically, just kind of like you know futzing around with it today. But futzing is uh... oh, you go by Glitter Wolf. Yes, Glittery Canine. All right, I know you, Glitter Wolf. Welcome, welcome to the uh, to the gang. If you uh, have you been lurking before, or is this, have you just decided to check it out today? All right, so we're. Uh... Yeah, I'm just mucking around. Like, this is just like, muck around, see what looks good. I've got no pressure on me because this is like, you know, I'm not doing this model for anybody. So I can try things and see if they work. Anybody with kids sees the word glitter and just cringes inwardly. I, I'm convinced of it. And I can't entirely blame you. I'm going to do a little bit of underpainting on this one to see how a little bit of underpainting does. I'm going to put a couple of little fire motes and fireflies in there too, I think. You can't have sparkle, sparkle fireball without glitter. <laughs> ah, you guys. All right, so now we're just putting a kind of a heavy glaze of uh, volcanic orange over this area. I decided to go a little heavier this time and see see if I liked it. Might not like it. If so, I can grab a little bit of my uh, black and brown and kind of reverse blend it up into that to darken it a little bit. Let's 
see bringing that black and brown up in there see how it gets it more darky and more more sparky more dark and spark there that looks cool <laughs> yeah i'm not certain about changing forum names that's out of my uh, pay grade with Reaper. I'm not sure if you, I mean, I kind of assume you could change the name on your account, but I have no idea how. Uh, I need more of this. Oh, we need more, need more orange. Do, 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 do. Just getting more of the volcanic orange down on the edge. That lets me grab some of my lighter colors and hit that edge to make it more glowy-tastic. We're just gonna make up words today. I decided it's Dr. Seuss Day. Actually, there's gotta be a national Dr. Seuss holiday. Isn't there? Somewhere? Because I make up words all the time. Alrighty, let's grab some lighter orange and get that edge. Kind of bring it in to those areas and grab some yellow. Hmm. This is where it could uh, help us to maybe make a bit of a crack here and there. Make kind of little streaks on the edge here. Bring it up a bit. Yeah, I kind of like that, actually, I think. It's a faster technique than the other one. It still gives me a little bit of disruption on these big black spots. So it's not quite as boring, but it's not as distracting. To get more of my yellow. I might need to think it, thin it a little bit. Dr. Seuss Day is March 2nd. Thank you, Dragon Eye. Uh, Kit is uh, our IT guy, dog father. He also is the guy who handles our UK operation. Yeah, he's our, uh, he's our, our foreign IT guy. I'm domestic. I'm the domestic guy. Justin is the domestic guy. Do you know how to change a forum handle on our forums, Justin? Is that possible? Um, I think I remember once a long time ago, um, Cheryl mentioning to me that it was possible. I don't know the process. I mean, I have, I, don't, I think I have, I don't even think I have admin on the forums. Really? Uh, no. You're the IT guy. Like. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, most of my stuff is hard. Like, for instance, yesterday I fixed a, two printers and the shipping terminal for distribution for all these uh for all these um swag boxes so oh, actually, yeah. if anyone here ordered a swag box shipping was able to resume yesterday because i fixed it all so you're yeah welcome. there you go justin um kit kit is uh I, I don't know about the website i believe that kit is still doing the website and he he hired a helper to help him with it yes that is correct and and then uh, the entire, you know, all of the UK shipping or European shipping over there, he handles from that warehouse. So he does the, those two things alone are pretty time consuming. So, yeah. Yes, Justin's Mr. Fisk, Mr. Fix It. This is for sure. Yeah, if it's, if it's technological, I likely I fix it. You even got a little bit of, like, um, hands-on, like, mechanical, though, didn't you, with Victor? Like, there's some things that you learned? <laughs> yeah, I, I repl actually, it's funny you say that I replaced my hot water heater because of, uh... How, what you learned there. That. Yeah, see, there you go. I do tend to, to, if something is remotely interesting, I'll soak, I'll soak up the information from it. 
So like, yeah, from Victor, it was uh, wasn't a great experience, but I did learn a lot. So right, like uh, you know, building things. I can do any plumbing now, basically. That's that's basic. Not like I'm not yeah. gonna run plumbing in a wall, but you know, I can do right. all that kind of stuff now. Basic I can repairs. Lay tile. Right. Um, yeah. I can replace my hot water heater, stuff like that. That's cool. I can I can dig a five foot trench that's about four foot wide that runs about. 15 feet for a car wash that's a specific <laughs> talent but I can do that too <laughs> that was that, oh, actually, God. You, you were there for that I that was, was there for awesome. that yes. it was in the middle of the winter so the ground was really hard yeah. too, it was already frozen. you all time. you all looked cold. miserable yeah you it all looked miserable miserable not gonna lie yep alright so that looks better guys that edge looks better now I think that's a little bit too much noise there, I think. Although, I don't know. The fireflies start here, so maybe the, having a few fireflies around here is a good idea. Little sparks and bits. Maybe I'll make more fireflies out toward this end. Alrighty. I'm trying to figure out what to eat for lunch, Anne. What should I eat for lunch? Um, wow. I always eat the same thing for lunch, so I'm not sure. Maybe um, a sandwich of some sort? That sounds great. I'll order a sandwich. Yes. Something that I never eat because I'm gluten-free, but... <laughs> you know, I accidentally... I meant to tell you about this, because you were the one person, I feel like, who I could tell this, and it would be relevant. <laughs> um, I accidentally ordered a gluten-free banh mi, I think it was, from oh. a... Uh, and Honestly, Anne, it was so good that it made I made me look back because it didn't taste right. It tasted odd, but it was very good. Uh huh. So I I went back and looked at my order, and I was like, I ordered gluten free on accident. I, honestly, I think I could go gluten free. As <laughs> yeah. Long as it's all like that. I have no problem. <laughs> they have so many good gluten free like substitutes for things these days. Um, you know, and it's not like you have to give up all your starches. You can still have rice and you can still have, you know, things like that. It's Absolutely. just, yeah. I mean, a lot of the, like you, you don't get really the good crusty bread. That's the one thing you don't get. But if you don't like, I, I never really missed that myself. So I had no problem with it. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, there's so many good, really good, good gluten-free, um, foods out there nowadays. Not like, uh, you know, if you tried it back in the nineties, good luck to you. But, uh, now, now it's much better. So, yeah, but especially like Asian food, um, any Asian food, like you, you, there's really no reason to have gluten in there at all. Unless you're getting non bread or something, but I'm pretty sure you can make a decent gluten free non though. Uh, you're right. It does taste a little different, but that doesn't mean it tastes bad. It just tastes a little different. Yeah, no, it was, it immediately hit me like it. I, I almost thought I was biting into something that wasn't bread. Uh huh. It, it was an immediate shock. I will say that. Yes. Yes. But tasty, right. So, and that is, I guess that's gluten-free in a nutshell there with gluten-free baked goods. It's like, it's not quite the same, but it's good. So, yeah, I make gluten-free Christmas cookies. So, there you go. Let's see. Do I ever yeah, have I... the paint rub off when handling the mini? Um... Yeah, glittery canine. I mean, that's why you'll notice. I'm. I mean, I've got some rub off back here. I mean, I'm always ready to, to. Um, I mean, if I'm really, if I'm doing like competition piece, I'm probably going to be either handling just the unpainted part, or I'm going to mount it on something so that I can paint it. But for the stream here, I'm not too concerned about it. And I still need to do a little bit of skin work on his um his other hand, so I know that I'll have the colors open to touch this up. And none of this is done, so it doesn't matter. Um. So yeah, I've been. Working on this, but with bigger models, what I always tell people is when I was working on Soldier, um, I actually use bubble bubble wrap. I get a nice soft, like I have the, the small bubble bubble wrap and just use it for a cradle for the model. That way I can just sit and paint on it. And the bubble wrap is totally non-abrasive, so it's not going to rub off any paint if I have something painted. Um, so yeah. I don't like to wear gloves. Uh, I, I prefer just to put a cradle of some sort in my hand for big models. For little models, I mount them on things. So, like, Ms. Commissar is, uh, is mounted on, with Sticky Tack, is mounted on an old dog pill bottle. Um, so, yeah, she's coming right along. But, uh, so things like that. But with big models, I tend to use bubble wrap if I care if it's gotten to that point. I have the, the really soft, not stiff bubble wrap um, is the one I use. 
I just wrap it around various parts of the model and just hold the model by those. That's how a soldier got off without any rub off. His, you know, when you're painting a 12 inch statue. I just wrapped his legs in bubble wrap and I held him there. And he had a bubble wrap cradle for lying on the table while I was working on parts of him. But also, uh, don't worry if you haven't received a shipping notice for your swag box. Um, I got Cindy and her crew are working crazy hard and honestly um, through their lunches oh, no. and stuff like that to get everything shipped because, you know, they know people are waiting and it needs to get done. Uh, we did have a little bit of a hiccup yesterday because I had to fix that stuff, so that did kind of delay everything, like, about an hour or two, but it is, like I said, it's back on track, so. Hey, Rockham, uh, you always can ask me questions, even if they've been asked before, because I, that's what the stream is about, and repeating stuff isn't bad because we always have new people, and even the older people may have forgotten certain points, so you should always just, just ask. There's so many commonly asked questions with miniature painting that it, I think if you try to make a fact, you'd be writing a book, <laughs> which is which is one of my Patreon goals. <laughs> um, Mathophile, I always look at whether the part is going to interrupt. If, if attaching the part means that I can't paint something next to it or under it easily, I paint the part first and then attach it. If I can attach the part and still reach everything around it, then I attach it. You want to put as many parts together as you can while still reaching all the surfaces you need to reach. But the minute something is going to keep you from easily painting a surface under or next to it, that's when you don't attach that thing. Um, and Star Wars Geek, it is the female commissar from Imperial Guard, um, Severina Rain, I think is her name. And she's a commission and she is almost done. Um... Hey, non-zero. Oh, swag boxes. You guys are still talking. Yeah, that's Justin questions. Those aren't and questions. <laughs> but yeah, Rackham, never, never feel, even if it's like the most elementary question ever and you're certain it's a silly question, there are no silly questions. Just ask. Um, like I said, we, we, every day I see new people on here and they all might have the question you've got. So never feel bad about asking any question, even if it has been asked a lot before. That said, we are probably almost to our AMA. Are we not, Justin? Are we not getting close? We honestly, at this point, we may already be there. Really? We I thought we'd time. be in the nineties. I, I feel like we've been getting a few subs every show. Um, I'll, I'll touch base on it again. Like it's, it's been kind of a chaotic, uh, week, especially this week, but, um, I will, I'll, I'll count it after this one Anne, and I'll get back to you and then we'll probably, if we're there, then we'll announce to people this next time, kind of what we're doing. But if not, then, you know, we'll okay. get the updated numbers. Super. Hey, um, Rackham, uh, since this is bones, I washed it and I don't prime it. I just paint straight on it. If it was like a metal model or a um, resin model where I had rub off, uh, then yeah, I would probably go back like on my, on my samurai chick here. Um, I've been working on the front of her and I do have some rub off, a little bit of rub off on the back of her here. So yeah, I would take some real, some thin primer and just do some, some touch ups, uh, wherever I had rub off on her. She's got, she's got rub off just because she, uh, wasn't painted enough to attach to her base yet. So I have had to hold her in order to work on her and I was being bad and not using bubble wrap. So yeah. So I totally would retouch with uh, brush on primer. In fact, that's why I keep brush on primer in the house is, is pretty much to do that. Um, Epic Lotus man. Uh, I don't have a problem keeping paint on the tips of the brush. I, uh, I use sable, pretty high end sable brushes. So are you saying that you have trouble like with the paint not being runny off the brush or it's usually if you have trouble, uh, yeah, there are no silly questions, just silly people. Um, I like the dragons don't share dragon Iggy, but I'm afraid Maldrakar is my favorite dragon because I've been asking for a Tiamat and wanting a Tiamat, uh, for so long and it's not Tiamat, but I can convert it into Tiamat. So that's awesome. <laughs> It's like, we can't do Tiamat, but we can do something that Anne can convert into Tiamat. And that's that's the important part. Okay, so on the tip of the brush. If you want to keep your paint on the tip of the brush, one thing I do is after I dip the brush in water, I just kind of squeeze it out. I don't dry it off. So that way there's still moisture in here. And that means whatever paint I keep on it is going to stay wet. I'm thinning my paint so it's not super thick. I'm only loading a little bit onto the brush tip. And then I'm wiping most of it off. Because my paint is pretty thin... And because I've got some moisture in the brush, it's going to continue coming off and I can do tiny little lines with it. And it's going to continue coming off for a pretty good long time. If you ever have a problem with your paint 
not coming off your brush, you need to add more water to your paint. And if you have too much paint coming off your brush, then you uh, probably want to unload your brush more. You might have a little bit too much water too. It is a big conversion job, Coops, because of course our, our Maldricar is more like a Hydra Lord than uh, than the traditional Tiamat because the heads are, you know, the heads would have to be really different. So yeah, I do have that on my, I have a resin Maldricar and my like little internal, if I ever have time, uh, job is to convert all those heads to traditional D&D dragon heads. Oh, thanks, Gary Beal. Yeah, I, uh, I do have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash painting big. Uh, I do lots of stuff there. I actually was just uh, working on editing a new video for it yesterday and I'm working on a new PDF for it too, guys. So yeah. Yeah. I really feel like they need to do a better job on Tiamat. Like she's so cool. Like I wish that, that uh, D&D would come out with a really awesome one. Uh, but yeah, sable brushes do keep your po their points really well. This is that's one thing to bring up is if the point on your brushes are going, you're probably using a synthetic, not a natural hair sable. Um, if you keep your brushes well rinsed and you're using a natural sable hair, you should keep a tip like pretty easily. Yeah, I don't even use brush soap, but I rinse so frequently that my brushes keep a uh, really good tip. You can see how razor that tip is. It lets me do all those little tiny firefly motes on the on the blade. Oh yeah, thank you, Gurgi. Um, we also have the Ann AMA, which Justin was saying he thinks we've pretty much reached. We have to decide what big giveaway we're gonna do. What we do is we do an AMA. We do one session here, um, a normal length session, and we do an AMA and a giveaway. So I wanted to do a hundred sub target this time because I wanted to give away something big. So Justin, when are you gonna be at Reaper next? Uh, tomorrow morning. Can you look at some of the big dragons and stuff and see what's in stock? Because I know dragons. Well, I can do that. Dragons don't share. I think is out of stock, unfortunately. Because I would have gone for dragons don't share. When you say big, are you referring to like maybe Trogzul? Yeah. Some stuff yeah, mind? big big stuff like that. Yeah, look at a couple of different okay. things and and just like write down a couple of them and tell me. Give me a choice of like three or four things and we'll we'll choose the choose from that. Alrighty. That would be lovely. Yes, yes. Alright, so cool. Thanks for the Patreon um, hit there, Zero. That's my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash painting big. I also do some Twitch on my own channel. I may be streaming this afternoon. Um, it's, uh, again, it's twitch.tv slash painting big. It's all painting big. Um, and so, yeah, just, uh, check it, check it out, guys. And I think we are, yeah, I wanted to give away a dragon. I wanted to give away something big, Dragon Eye. For the AMA this time, that's why we went for 100 subs instead of 60. Because I have to, I have to get enough subs so that I can give you guys away a big thing. So that is, it'll be a surprise. Justin is going to go and uh, and nose around uh, in the internet department and see what we've got in stock. So because the big models are all hiding in there, so we'll see. We'll see. Cross your fingers that Justin can find some really cool stuff. Um, so all right. All right, I think we're, we've gone 10 minutes over. That's good. I wanted to make up my time for yesterday having the Kiri emergency and having to get off early. So uh, now we can look for a raid. All right. I actually already have one. Wow, you're so efficient. Yeah. Um, Here, mainly because I, I kind of want to promote this person because they're going to have a, a show for us pretty soon. Ooh, oh, is it Luca? Yeah, it's Luca, yeah. Yay! Luca's going to do a show for us. So hey, guys, look at how cool the Sword Edge looks when it's on an angle. That's how you know you've done it cool. I think it looks really nice on camera. I'm, I'm, I still need to tackle this. Like the runes, they need more work. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys had fun. Like, thanks for showing up. Thanks for hanging out. And maybe I'll see some of you if, if, I, if I stream this afternoon. I'm, I'm kind of hoping to do at least a short stream. It looks hot and cool. Thanks, right. Rathmore. <laughs> Have a great one. And pass on the love to Luca, you guys, okay? Yes. Keep being awesome, guys. Spread Have the fun. Reaper love. We're glad you guys came out. It's good to see your bright, shining, and fantastic uh, E-faces. And E-faces, yes. And uh, hopefully we'll see you this afternoon for Proctor's show at 4 p.m. Central, which is the uh, Crow's Nest. He's going to be doing a um, complete airbrush demo and review of the Vex airbrush. So anyone curious about the Vex airbrush, come out and check out the show this afternoon. It should be great. Maybe it'll answer some questions, maybe not. But uh, it'll be fun at the very least. Thank you guys very much, and have a great day.